Command ice and snow. Hey, strap fans, it's Colonel Strap, Strategy Extraordinaire here, and today we're diving into our first Warhammer 3 race. So, I decided to cover the Warhammer 3 races as follows Kislev, Cathay, the Demon Races, Ogres, and then Chaos Dwarves. Um, I feel like that's the you know best way because the two um, human factions were seen in the main campaign, the Storm, or I think it's Storm of Chaos. I'm not sure what it was called, but it was, you know, it wasn't the best campaign, but the main campaign, the story one, it was uh, heavily featured around the two human factions, even though the demon factions did have um, a, lot of, a lot of flavor, I just feel like Kislev and Cathay got a lot of a particular love. Alright, so anyway, I'm going to be covering Kislev today, um, and uh, we're going to show what these vodka wearing, these vodka drinking, um, barrel riding p people are made of um, so <coughs> I, I chose Katarin to, to explore it because her faction is not very you know it's very generalized even though she herself is really good with ice guard because you know half upkeep for ice guard you're gonna want that but um, overall she's pretty basic even though she is pretty badass in her own right so let's get right into into the guide All the motherland stands behind me. Uh, Katarin is <coughs> brave as ever. So, um, Kislev starts, um, and for the Immortal Empire start, it's not as good of a start as for their, like, main, the story campaign start, because, you know, Kislev's very shrunk, um, but it isn't, it isn't a bad start. They still need a little bit of love. So, um, Kislev itself starts... Like, especially Katarin, she starts in Kislev itself. Um, their buildings are a little different than others. Um, they, yes, ha they have their main military buildings and resources and all that. But I believe all of them have these landmarks um, that cost devotion to get. Uh, and I'll get into devotion in a little bit as well. But these landmarks are pretty, pretty powerful. They, um, they get um, quite a quite a bit. I think it's just in Kislev that has these landmarks. Um, and then there's the regular advanced military buildings. The, um, the defense buildings are quite a, quite a bit more than normal because they have bat they have like battlement like a like a city defenses and then like a watch like garrison. But then you come into infrastructure they have a crap ton of infrastructure buildings and I actually advise building infrastructure buildings in the main settlement for Kislev because they just they they do so much like 400 income right there that this merchant guild hall here is going to give you so much income so I usually build that um, that's where their buildings differ from others um, now to continue on they have um, this little icon up here um, this is your your the motherland mechanic the devotion mechanic is um, 
kind of like up here you get um you use devotion which you generate over time by like killing killing things it's one of the post battle options um you know characters can passively gain it like patriarchs um you fight chaos units um you do hero actions technology and all that you get that passively and then you can invoke the motherland to get special abilities and buffs to all of your armies and you will get some supporters whenever you generate it so you want to keep doing it as fast as possible i usually do urson because it um you know whenever you're first starting i do urson because you'll get a lot of supporters when you occupy and even though you don't want to spend too much devotion because it will give you a chance of a chaos incursion but um it does help to spend it when you have it, but just usually like the 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 um, threshold is a hundred when a chaos incursion will occur. So going moving on, we have the ice court, which um, I don't know if the other factions get it, but I know that Katarin gets it. I think all the factions get it though. Um, so you can recruit frost maidens and ice witch lords, and you can pretty much create your you know you, you can get a, your old lord created. And then once you get a candidate, you can build her how you want her. It's pretty cool. We also have Adamans, which you, when you secure a province, you're able to assign an Adaman to it. That'll give a random buff. It's kind of like a governor, like the governor systems from Rome, from Rome too. Um, and then the camp, the Kislev um, tech tree is a little bit different as well. They have certain certain texts on the land and then like if you you have to research two to unlock the next tier some texts have a devotion cost which gives you you know either upgrades your your stuff i, I believe all of them are up, upgrades um but uh they're all upgrades to the um invocations i usually um go with uh either kislev with um this for growth and replenishment or um, cold storage hooked axe blades helps with the uh, crossars and all that I'll usually go with cold storage it's pretty basic like you know you you get five techs here you go to up to this to this tier um, and the the bigger tiers the the better the the techs so it, it's it's an okay tech tree it could be tweaked but it's okay kids lives diplomacy is pretty much ice cold with anyone that isn't Kislevite, um, even though Katarin does start um, well liked by the Norse dwarves, Krakadrak, and with Ry now, with Reichland, the Empire as well. Of the Empire. So, um, which makes sense because um, they're both humans. Oh, like they, these, just are like ice humans. But uh, one last Sorry, thing we'll we'll show you is oh, how to get this devotion. So like you have decisive yeah. victory here. Oh. And um, we can, you know, use Saliac to heal. We can kill them all, treasury, or get devotion. I the usually get devotion, just you know, to stack it up as much as possible. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much all K Kislev's um, main gameplay is about. Um, for the campaign, you just got to stack devotion, invocate, and then you want to. You're you're kind of in a race with constant. Stalton here, the Great Orthodoxy. You want to gain um, all the way up to Loyalist Supremacy. You'll be able to confederate Stalton. If he gets there, he'll try to confederate you, and then there'll be a civil war. Um, but if you but if you get there before him, you'll get all these bonuses. Plus, you'll confederate him, which is really good. And then you can you know use supporter actions to you know um, gain a whole bunch of supporters with it, and to you know deep to lessen his. Now the Kislev's, Kislev has the lore of ice, um, which is a really it's a really powerful spell lore, and they have the you know you know their their basic lord abilities and all that. But you know um, she Katarin right here is really good with ice magic, and she like I said she buffs up um, her ice guard. All right, so that concludes the campaign section. Let's get into some character, some <coughs> army compositions. All right, so here we are with a tier one. So for 
all of Kislev's units, um, most of them are hybrid units. So like um, these armored Kassars I here I have here, even though they are technically a tier two unit. Um, it's just because they're made, built to be that good, but you can get them um, <laughs> by turn on turn one. Here. Them and their spear, um, their great weapon counterpart. So um, I usually get about six of these guys, um, just because they're just such a good frontline unit. They'll be able to hold really well with 80 armor, a silver shield, hey, and um, no <clears throat> you know they do have a missile strength of 25, and um, they have this um, by our blood. So. Basically, they're unbreakable as long as their leadership does not waver, um, which is really good. Um, it, it, you know, their leadership doesn't drop down; they'll they'll get a huge leadership bo bonus. It just means that if they're flanked, that's how you get these guys to break. Um, but uh, then we have the armored versions, the uh, you know. Dual, the the great weapon versions and in the back we have the regular Kassars which again they uh, they are still a decent melee combatant um, even though they're not as good as the armor Kassars and they do have a really good missile strength and range they're pretty decent for their tier and I often will doom stack these guys um, just because they're that good and finally here I have Kosovite Dervishes. The Dervishes aren't the best cavalry, but they do serve a good purpose. And they have a decent um, weapon strength for a cavalry of tier 1. So I use them and they serve their purpose well. And then of course I have Katarin down here, the Ice Queen herself. And then I have a, ice, a frost, frost Maiden of the Tempest Lord. That way we cover both. And the Tempest, I argue, is actually better than Ice. Even though um, Supreme Leader. they do have Heart of Winter, which is great, but it takes a while to to Jeez. cast, so it really um, doesn't do so well against big blobs. All right, so we're going up against Norska here. All right, let's face them. All right. I'll let them tire by running to us. I've done a bad engagement for the dervishes. Do hailstorm against those guys. The people and then we'll do death frost to um, these guys. Then we'll do um, the power of winter. Uh, this one's supposed to be like a yeah. follow the frost. Sarina Katarin. Let's do that one. 
obey the orthodoxy. Yeah. yeah, those dervishes, they're not the best. The regular kills about units, like these hybrid units here, the uh, um, armored Tassars and all that are just so much better. Fighting wind. No! Abandon the fire! All right, there we go. That's pretty good. So these dervishes will come and do these ones. Again, the dervishes are kind of there just to fill the role of um, artillery support or like um, cavalry support, as well. And say, um, so they're not meant to like really perform really well. Not like the armored cassars. Like some of these armored cassars took quite a bit of casualties. But even the ones that took quite a bit, they're still doing really well compared to the um, dervishes that took so many more. Because they have hybrid fire. So like when the enemy gets close, they shoot them with their pistols. There we go. We just took out their lord and. Doing really well, only took four minutes. So again, you know, very powerful start with the armored Kassars. Um, and the regular Kassars, they perform very well for their for their um, for their class. The dervishes is where we, we hurt, but don't worry, Kislevite cavalry gets better in the later tiers. So let's move on to a tier two. And here we have a tier two. So um, for the tier two, the biggest difference you'll see is the um, upgrade from the um, Kassars to the Streltsy. Streltsy are really good, um, they have a really high armor piercing value, so makes it making them high valued in the late game. They also have a unique, they're really unique because they are a gun great axe hybrid. So they have 34 weapon strength armor piercing with their great axe and then 19 with their gun. It's really good. Coupled with the 70 armor, it makes them ideal melee fighters as well. So they are one missile infantry that can actually hold a, a melee line as well. So I use them on both sides to try to strengthen my line, um, you know, to keep make it better. Um, and then of course I have my armored Kassars like I did last time. Um, again, they're they're just really a solid infantry choice. And then in the back to replace the dervishes, we have winged lancers. Um, they are just better in every regard. And they're a lance infantry, a shock cavalry. So you'll want to hammer an anvil with them. But they're just better in all regard. I also threw in one unit um, that I don't really use, and this is the um, heavy war sleds. The white light war sleds are okay, but the heavy one has a lot of um, um, like better stats, like bonus for his infantry. And they have Streltsy guns in the back, so they're really good. Coupled with the high armor, makes them a very good um, chariot, missile chariot to harass the enemy with. Um, they have a decent speed of 66 so again they'll be able to harass the enemy i usually keep them on the side um, to harass these zing chain enemies we have katarin on a war horse now um and then we have um her the frost maiden as well again and then we've also added a new hero the patriarch yeah, so the patriarch is a buffer hero he has like healing buffs or uh, like combat buffs that really help it out help out the the uh, troops around and um you know he gets more combat buffs as he links up so let's go into this battle against the demons of chaos to flee is to be disloyal and disloyalty means execution you can win you must win Yeah, Streltsy would kill them before they get in. Full staff Gislovites! Yeah. 
to chew them up, Shelton. Let's go into it there. Right, now of course we're gonna have the wing lancers go around the back. So that they can deal with the enemy. Let's do this healing of Salyak. Buff and spell. Ringer of Gorkos, led by Rhine, face the clock. Right, social blast. Pop all of our battle hymns. Let the Patriarch do it. Alright, ring the lancers. Yeah, we're starting to starting to beat them now. Focus down that guy. Let's get him. Yeah. Being lancers. This wolf sends us forth. Yep, they're starting to crumble. It's disintegrate. That's good. This pretty much means we're going to win. We take up arms. There we go. Now the thing about Kislev is the units just don't give up because of that by our blood um, passive. If they just heal. And well, they don't heal, but they just they just don't break, which makes them incredibly hard to deal with as enemies and incredibly satisfying as a player. So that was a tier two. Let's go on to a tier three. And finally, we have a tier three. So for our tier three army, we've updated our armored Kassars with Zargard. Zargard is really really good, and I usually get the great weapon variant coupled with a few um, sword sword and board variants for the sides. Sargard is a definitely an upgrade, really good frontline unit, and um, can hold their own and um, squash up an infantry force really nicely. In the back we have Katarin's signature Ice Guard. I usually go for the swords, just because of that bonus for his infantry, um, because they're not going to really be wanting, to, you're not going to want to put them into the melee combat, but if they can be, they're really, really good. Um, they're still pretty good in melee combat, and they're really good in, in uh, ranged combat. So I usually pack a good amount of them. And then um, in the back, we have two Warbear Riders. One of them is a Regiment of Renown. Um, the Warbear Riders are the Kislev's ace in the hole. Um, I only keep a couple for Katarin because she doesn't really buff them that much. But um, like her father buffs them a whole lot, so your, your in-game army for her father will look a lot um, very bear-like. Um, 
And then we have a little Grom, the Kislev's only artillery unit. It's a very decent artillery unit. It does a pretty good um, anti-infantry and armor piercing damage. And then for Katarina herself, her, her Patriarch, and her um, Frostmane all are on War Bears now, um, increasing their um, ferocity even more. Um, they're going to be really, really powerful and uh, really good in a, in, a, in a melee fight as well. So let's go up against these war this Warriors of Chaos army. I think the little grunts are already firing. Where's the chosen? Yeah, I think that's good there. Just fire there. Warfare riders! Ah! Hearts of ice! Whatever ah! Lucian asks! Alright, then we'll start firing on them. Doing a lot of armor piercing damage. We will want to focus down that Keeper of Secrets, if we can. So let's get a couple. In fact, get the Ice Sheet down. Focus down that Keeper of Secrets. There we go, they weren't able to use that before it got... There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Deal with those plague toads. Deal with those plague toads with these guys. Pop all of our battle hymns. Let's get, um, pop that. Yeah, that's the Chosen right there. They need to get out of there. Let's focus down the, that, those Chosen there. Yeah, that little Grom's going to do really well. Let's uh, continue to fire on these retreating units. Ice Guard, focus down those, those Chosen. And then the War Bears will come in as well to help. But already we've turned t we've turned their tail. It's just the Chosen units we got to focus on. But yeah, the Ice Guard do so, so much damage because of their Frostbite attacks. It reduces the enemy's speed, so they're able to do more volleys on them as well. And because it's armor piercing, well, I don't think it's that armor piercing, but it is, yeah, eight, six armor piercing missile damage. It still is pretty decent um, for each entity. It's the frostbite effect that really helps make them do so much damage. Alrighty, so with that, that's a uh, that's all our tiers. Let's wrap this thing up, shall we? All right, so um, that does it with my Kislevite. Um, <clears throat> with my Kislevite, um, 
guide. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and um, you know that you're ready to bring Kislev's sheer determination and fury to the to the to the servants of chaos. So um, uh, I hope you guys learned a lot from this guide. Um, Kislev is a very interesting faction. It's very it needs some, a little bit of love, but they do have a lot of really good units and. Um, you can pull off a lot of clutch plays with them because of their trait by our blood. Um, it just really makes it hard for them to route. So, um, that'll conclude it for today's Strat fans. Keep it strategic. Colonel out.